Hello, Facebook. Good morning, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, however you're catching us. Marcus here. It is Friday morning. Um, got some, um, want to update you on some current things that are happening here at the restaurant. And um, going to talk about risotto this morning. Uh, if you love risotto, I'm going to drop some really cool information, some really great tips on risotto that, um, or the type of rice to use a lot and let. Not many people know this. Not even many chefs, especially chefs here in America, are a little, um, go ahead and dump it. Can I pour it? Yeah, go ahead and pour it. Jamie is icing down the brand new four packs of IPA, the Bail Me Out IPA four packs for 1999. I was waiting for you to say that. <laughs> <laughs> they are, she just, we just brought them out of the cooler. They came in yesterday and um, they came in yesterday and we're of course sold out of all the other stuff. So it's Friday and we are ready to rock and roll with the new four pack of Bail Me Out IPAs. I'm not gonna reveal what's in them right now, but if you have quick eyes and can see, there's some good ones in here. I will tell you one thing, there is other half in here. Uh, we did get a case of other half in, so that is super, super exciting. So those are $19.99, wall supplies last, four cases came in. So four, what happens is every week we get four awesome IPAs in cans, um, four individual cases. I mix and match the four packs, so you get one of each for $19.99. Rock bottom price, super, super, I mean, we've been, we've been blowing out of these like crazy. Our beer sales people are salesmen's like, and what in the world are you guys today, doing? And today for, um, uh, I did the drink yesterday. Okay. But I want to do quarts of bourbon maple cider to go tonight for $25. $25. Quarts of, so Jamie's drink yesterday was a bourbon maple cider. Bourbon, bourbon maple, maple cider. cider. Local Sam Scott Orchards fresh pressed cider. All right, we get these in every week from the Farm Hub. We sell these, by the way, gallons for 10 bucks. Um, for that, that is um, awesome for 10 bucks. That's an amazing price. So we were selling them for eight and they raised their price. Um, so we had to adjust our price. That's why we, if you bought them in the first week, they were eight. So they, they uh, uh, put more on, uh, uh, added on to their price. So we had to pass that on to you, unfortunately. But these are only 10 bucks and we get, we get a couple cases every single Wednesday. These just came in fresh. So the bail me out. So Jamie's gonna make a quart of her bourbon maple apple cider for $25, $25, quarts to go tonight, tonight only, 25 bucks. So a four pack of that awesome beer, has the other half in there, there's some other cool stuff in there, but the other half is in there. So um, we got lots of bottles of, of Peabody bourbon too, if you want a bottle of bourbon for 25 bucks, a really good bottle of bourbon for 25 bucks. Um, so I'm gonna talk about risotto here, I'm gonna talk to why the restaurant smells like this. Um, it smells a certain way right now. Uh, first I'm gonna talk about vitamin C and gloves and water. So we're giving away our ionized water, of course. Our ionized water is high alkaline, high antioxidant, micro-clustered water, electron-rich water that absorbs into your body. We all know that drinking water is healthy. If you took all the diets out there, every single diet that exists, and found one common denominator in every single diet, no matter it's keto, raw, vegan, the one common denominator is water. Water is the common denominator of health, okay? We're giving away free ionized water. We have a almost $2,000 machine here that we've had a couple machines over the course of the last 15, 16 years. And we actually sell the machines, by the way, too. Um, so the machines we can drop ship into you or you can pick them up here. Uh, the machines start at 750 if you get a home, home model. I'm not trying to sell you a machine right now. I'm trying to give you this water and tell you to understand, give you a premise of why this water is so valuable. It is micro clustered, which means it goes into the cells better. Water, all water found, if you take tap water, you'll find like 15 to 18 molecules per cluster. When you can break that down and get five molecules of water per cluster, it's gonna absorb into your body better. So if you took water side by side, ionized water, non-ionized water, and, um, and dropped a tea bag in one and a tea bag in the other, you would see that the ionized water would go into the tea bag much quicker because the water's smaller, it's micro clustered which means when it gets into your body, it's going to absorb into your cells quicker. It's gonna get into your, it's gonna, the absorption rate is better. So yes, not all water is equal. 60, 70%, 80% of the water in the store in those bottles is not good water. It's not worth paying for. There are some really good brands out there, but there's some that are not good at all. Some of them are basically tap water, or tap filtered tap water, um, nothing, you know. And ionized water is one of those things you have to have fresh. Um, you lose certain things within the first 24 hours. The alkaline, certain things stay, but if you can get this fresh um, every couple days, that's great. No purchase necessary, by the way. Come in here, bring your jug. We will fill it with water, 
all right, uh, with ionized water, no purchase necessary. Gloves, I got five more cases of gloves in the other day and two more cases of gloves in yesterday. So one of my suppliers is coming through with gloves. Actually, two of my suppliers. The one supplier that we were buying them for for the longest time, global shortage, um, no ETA. So another. So the other one was back and forth, yes, no, yes, no. We got some from them yesterday, and the day before we got five cases. So we're giving out free gloves. Come in, get a handful. No purchase necessary again. Um, um, no purchase necessary at all. We wanna give you gloves, be safe out there. Um, use your gloves properly. Um, your, um, you know, this big thing is now that we have to wear masks. Be careful because I see a lot of people just touching their masks. And I, I'm guilty of this. I'm touching and adjusting my mask all the time. Folks, you have to sanitize your mask when you're done with it. Spray it down with hydrogen peroxide. If it's a bandana or something, wash it because you're going to get germs in there from breathing hot, moist air in there. You're going to create an environment that is going to love bacteria, germs, and things like that. So you can spray these down. You can take these if you have um, one of those paperish masks. Spray it down with hydrogen peroxide, rubbing alcohol. Don't spray it around with rubbing alcohol and then put it on. That's, that's not, it's not good. Um, you, will not, you will not have a great experience with that mask and the rubbing alcohol, sniffing that in. So, but hydrogen peroxide, spray it down. Um, you can even put hydrogen peroxide and rub it on your face before you put your face on so it covers any areas around here that may have um, um, a gap in it. So, um, I'm not a big fan of the masks. We have to wear them or, or you know, covers mandated them. I'm not a big fan. We just got these um, shields in um, that I'm using the shield now. And I love the shield. It's so much for me. It's so much better because there's no fidgeting with anything and um, and I can breathe properly and it, it's great. And then I, after I used it last night, I sprayed it down with rubbing alcohol and let it evaporate. And then I sprayed it down with vinegar and wiped it clean so I could see again. Um, I want to talk about next vitamin C. People have been asking me, Marcus, tell me again how you take your vitamin C. I'm quite, I'm a little uncertain how you, how you take your vitamin C. I've said many times that I'm drinking a lot of vitamin C. Drinking, not taking tablets, I'm drinking. For me, it's easier to drink. I take a quart of water, I take my vitamin C powder, my ascorbic acid vitamin C powder, or whatever kind of vitamin C you wanna get. Um, so this is vitamin, this is effervescent vitamin C with magnesium crystals in it. I go through about one of these, a, we're going through about one of these a week, these containers. Um, so what I do, I drink this, this, what I'm gonna do now is I'm not gonna drink this all at once. This is my vitamin C water for, for the next half of the day, and then I'm gonna make another one of these later in the afternoon and drink it tonight. So, one teaspoon. One teaspoon is all I need. Right there, okay. Here's my water. Let's see if I can, all right, drop it in. Now I have six grams of vitamin C here, six full grams of vitamin C, and I will drink this, I will drink two of these. I take a lot of vitamin C. I take a ton of vitamin C. If you do some research on vitamin C, um, on mega dosing and stuff, um, there's a lot of amazing, amazing stuff out there. Vitamin C is what they were using in China to combat this. Vitamin C is being used in some hospitals in New York. Um, in hospitals, I've always asked um, for loved ones to get vitamin C drips. You can actually get an IV of vitamin C and get more doses. Uh, chances are if you're in the hospital and you ask for vitamin C uh, for yourself or for a loved one that's battling something, they're gonna give you 500 milligrams. This is six grams. This is uh, 12 times stronger than something they would give you in the hospital. Literally, when my parents were in the hospital, I would ask for vitamin C, they would bring 500 milligrams. I'm like, guys, that's um, those are play doses. Let's get serious and get some good vitamin C. Let's get a vitamin C drip here and let's let's do this. Um, a lot of alternative therapies call for, cancer, uh, for, um, for vitamin C therapy. Uh, Linus Pauling, um, there's a ton of work out there on vitamin C, you can do some research. But vitamin C, um, this is how I do mine. And there you go, I'll put this down and half an hour I'll drink more. Do drink water every hour, every half an hour. At least get two, four ounces down, keep drinking, keep your throat moist and back. All right, so let's get on to why the restaurant smells like this, all right? The restaurant has a very unique odor right now. Um, that odor is fresh baked bread from Bread Alone. Bread Alone bread just arrived. Uh, it just walked in the door. It's their 12 grain uh, and seed baguette. Um, not the classical definition of a baguette, but this is the healthier version of a baguette. And this is awesome. These just came in. We got their miche and we got their peasant bread. Just walked in the door, six big, big boxes. Um, bread alone came through today. All of our delivery is here. Everything's here. 
the restaurant smells amazing. So, by the way, if you're watching live, do me a favor and just drop a comment live if it's on the replay. Um, so I'm at 9.05 live right now, 9.05 a.m. So if it's not 9.05 a.m., you're on the replay. So drop a comment replay. But right now, if you're watching live on the live, 9.05 a.m., so drop a comment live. Um, let me see if I can see if we have any comments coming in. Um, so I'm going to go to my computer here. I'm going to talk about risotto next. Risotto is next. So, all right. Let's see. My cousin Gina's on. Hi, Barb. Good morning, everybody. Um, so people are dropping some comments. Awesome. So good morning, everybody. A lot of people on. Nancy. Uh, let's see. Let me expand this so I can really see everybody. Hi, Susie. Good morning. So risotto is one of my favorite things to cook. Um, Gina's saying love risotto. That's my cousin Gina. Um, Brenda, good morning. So a bunch of people are on. So Susan dropped something, doctoryourself.com. Um, I don't know what that is right now, but maybe it's about the vitamin C therapy. Vitamin C, about taking vitamin C. Barb says it's May 1st. Yes, it is May 1st. It is May 1st. Can you believe it? I'm going to go for my run here soon. Uh, I am approaching day 500 in a row of running, cycling, or hiking. Three-mile hike, at least a one-mile run, which is typically a little longer. Um, weekends, I run longer with my friends. In the weekdays, when I just have 10 or 15 minutes, I get out and just run. Um, I, uh, or I cycle six miles. I started this uh, December of 2018 when my mom had passed away. I wanted to keep myself occupied or focused. So I said if I run every day, at least I have to take time for myself. So that's what I've been doing ever since um, January, uh, December 2018 when my mom passed away. Um, so day 500 is coming up. I can't believe it. Now, next week, next Tuesday, I think, is day 500 of running in a row. So um, risotto. Uh, risotto. So on to risotto and a couple other things. These camembert squares just came in from Old Chatham Sheep Herding Company. These came in yesterday. These are amazing. Um, it's a four ounce square of camembert, if you love camembert. Brie is, um, Brie is a little, uh, this has a little more flavor than Brie camembert, typically and a little softer. So if you like Brie, you wanna step it up one notch, go to camembert. Um, we have a bunch of these jacuterie sopressadas in, which are great, local, local uh, sopressada maker. Our prosciutto now comes in one pound increments sliced. Uh, it's a bargain at one pound, uh, really a good deal because you're getting the restaurant pricing. Um, Gina goes, I love lobster risotto. Yes, Gina, lobster risotto is amazing. Um, lobster risotto is one of my favorites. Uh, mushroom risotto, um, truffle risotto, um, all kinds. I, I, I love risotto. Um, sweet potato risotto is one of my favorite. That was a grocery order coming in. Grocery order coming in? <laughs> you want to place your order, you need to place it by 3 o'clock today. 3 o'clock. If you have a grocery order, get them coming. 647-3000. Email us, info to RomanTimeBistro.com. Go to our website. Email us there. Our grocery list is on our website. Wait for a confirmation. Wait for a confirmation. Sorry, just uh, put it Yeah, yeah. No. Phones, phones literally ring here nonstop. Um, if you're placing a to-go order, by the way, if you want like to go like tonight, we're doing Thai chicken. The best time to do it is in the afternoon, um, especially on pizza night. Wednesday night is pizza night. We do buy one get one pizzas on Wednesday night. On Wednesday nights, don't call at six o'clock and like, hey, can I order pizzas? Because we start booking noon at noon. At noon, people start calling for pizzas. And if you call at six o'clock, we're gonna be like, oh, our next available time is 7.45. And a lot of people say, well, that's way too late. And they go, I didn't know I could call earlier. You can call at any time. 12 noon and on is best. Um, Jamie and I, we try to get stuff done in the office and we try to get some work done, get our email going, our blast email to go out. And then we can you focus can on- You can call regular menu, call anytime. Anytime. Office. It's hard for us to get it out to you in a half an hour. Right, it's, it's hard for you. If you called at six o'clock and say, hey, I wanna do a pickup order. It's not like normally. It's not like this, this holds a whole different game right now. Um, it's not like normal. We get backed up with all to-go orders and we have to fit you in. Our kitchen's only so big, just like if you were to come sit at a restaurant. And we can only have limited staff, so. Right, we can only have limited staff, so we can't execute everything like we would full board. But if it was regular, regular business and you walk into a restaurant, you'd have to have a reservation. You couldn't just walk in a lot of times and expect on a Friday, Saturday night or whatever night, say, oh, why can't you seat me right now? It's the same sort of concept. We're booking 
slots for to goes all day long. So there's already been 50 people that have called before you. You're not the only one calling. So call as early as you can, 647-3000. So um, risotto. Risotto is one of my favorite dishes. Um, risotto is um, a creamy rice dish from Italy, originated in Italy. It is Italian. There are three different types of main rices. There's up to five or six rices that you can use for risotto. Um, the most important thing, the characteristics for risotto, the rice needs to be short grain and starchy. It needs to be starchy, so thus short grain rice. Starchy is important. The biggest mistake that you're gonna make in risotto, the biggest mistake is washing your rice ahead of time. You do not wash your rice. A lot of, a lot of recipes, a lot of rices you wash ahead. Sushi rice, you wash it and wash it. Certain white people will wash rice, white rice. You wash it, okay? Um, so that's just the thing. This risotto, risotto rice, carnaroli, arborio, violone nano, or the other t small varietals you're gonna get. Violone nano is a small varietal too. It only grows up in the, in the Veneto region of Italy up north. Um, doesn't grow anywhere else. You can grow uh, arborio in California. Um, carnaroli, I'm not really sure um, if it grows outside, if it's, if it's So you do not want to wash the rice first. The starchiness, the starches want to make the creaminess. And the neat thing about those three rices, the main three rices, Arborio, Conarole, Violone, and Nano, is the way that they cook, give off the starches, and stay a little crunchier, firmer texture is what you're looking for. Now, the number one rice to use, the number one rice to use is Conarole. Conarole is it, all right? That is what you're looking for, Conarole rice. Carnaroli stays firmer than risotto, and it's harder to overcook uh, than arborio, and it's harder to overcook than arborio. Arborio, you can end up if you're not on top of it. If you're not on top of arborio and stirring, and 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 sitting there and understanding and having the patience and, and be on top of it, you will oh you can easily overcook that and can turn to mush. You'll lose the, all the characteristics. Carnaroli stays firmer and gets the creaminess. All right, that's why it's more money. And that's why the Italians keep it for themselves and typically don't send it over and teach us about it because they keep it for themselves. It's a rice that they want. It is available here in America. It is a little more pricier than Arborio, um, but it is well worth it. And for the home cook, even for the restaurant, because we don't cook risotto to order. When, when you get risotto from us or from any restaurant, it's not to order. They're not sitting there and taking a half an hour to stir each one individually. The same thing with pasta. A lot of people think like, oh, my pasta was fresh cooked. Only. Only certain restaurants will cook pasta that is not dried, fresh pasta that cooks in a minute or so, a couple minutes or so, will cook them to order. But if, if it's like dried pasta, normal run-of-the-mill dried pasta, any dried pasta, restaurants are cooking that ahead of time. There's no way if a restaurant has 50, 60 people, 100 people in, in, in the restaurant that they're sitting there boiling 25 pots of water and the chef's sitting there, you know, take after nine minutes to 12 minutes, checking each pie, each pot of 25 and say, okay, this is for table 101. This is table 302s. This is table out on the deck. That doesn't happen. Pasta is cooked ahead of time. Risotto is cooked ahead of time. Risotto is cooked three quarters of the way. That's what typically most restaurants do. They cook it three quarters of the way. So it's, it's par cooked. And this is what we do. We par cook it. Every place I've ever worked has done risotto this way. You par cook it. Um, so risotto's ratio is three to one. Is it three to one? I get confused on ratios now. There's a two to one, four to one. Oh my gosh, I'm drawing a total blank here um, on the ratio on risotto. If somebody can help me out here, um, I'm drawing a total blank. Um, I believe it's two to one, four to one, four to one. I don't know now. Our, our, I, I'm a ratio cook. I cook on ratios. So, um, so for example. Um, my polenta is a four to one ratio. Um, wow, I just drew a total blank on this. Um, so it's four to one, it's one cup, four cups. So if you were to cook risotto, you sit there and stir it slowly, you'd put three quarters of the cup, three quarters of the water in the broth or the stock, whatever you're cooking it with. And then that last one, that last quarter, you would leave off, put it in a pan, press it down, put it into the refrigerator. And then later tomorrow or later that night when your guests come for dinner at your house, you're not slaving away cooking risotto. You simply take the risotto out of the refrigerator, crumble it up, put it into the, into the pan, pour the last quarter part of your stock broth water into there, and bring it back to life, 
finish the cooking process, add your fat, oil, or olive oil, I'm sorry, butter or olive oil, your Reggiano cheese, and whatever you're flavoring it with at that point, if you're throwing mushrooms in, lobster, whatever. If you're making lobster risotto, you probably use lobster stock or broth to begin with. Um, if you're using mushroom, dried, like if you're using dried porcinis, all the water that comes off the dried soaking of the porcinis, you would use in the risotto to flavor it in the beginning. So then you can sit there and make amazing quality risotto and not sitting there, because you have guests coming over and, and you're not sitting there stirring away for a half an hour, 45 minutes and be like, oh my gosh, risotto's ready, time to sit down everybody, let's go. That last step by putting it into the refrigerator and pulling it out three quarters of the way cooked, you can literally execute it in literally five minutes and have the risotto perfect so you're not a slave to the risotto on your stove. So carnaroli rice will help you be able to still maintain the crunchiness, the crunchiness and not overcook it and have the starchiness, all right? Carnaroli will do that. Arborio will not do that as well. Arborio is not as forgiving. Violone Nano is up there with Carnaroli, but Violone Nano is much smaller production. Comes from up north in Italy, from the Veneto region, uh, home of Prosecco and where Pinot Grigio is famous for. And I love Pinot Noirs or Pinot Neros from that region up there are just magnificent from northern Italy, um, going towards the Slovenian side. Uh, there's some amazing wineries up there. So we have Carnaroli in stock. It is here, it's ready to go. If you buy two boxes, you save a dollar. Uh, that's part of our, it's on our grocery list. It is here, ready to rock and roll. Um, plenty of stock in of, of Carnaroli. Um, I think it's eight bucks or seven bucks, seven bucks. I'm not sure, I don't, I don't, quite, I don't quite remember. It's on our grocery list. It's on our grocery list, aromatimebistro.com. Click the grocery menu, you can see everything there. We are, we are doing deliveries. So if you're in Middletown, Goshen, Monroe, if you're in New Pulse Gardener, um, 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 Newburgh, Kingston, Woodstock, Saugerties. We are have we have delivery routes. Just email us, and we'll tell you when, when those are. Uh, they were sent out in emails. They're posted. We're even going to Northern New Jersey. We have some guests in Northern New Jersey that are interested in a lot of um, and a lot of and, and food and groceries from us. So, salmon is back in stock. Um, we got fresh salmon in, fresh frozen salmon, fresh more salmon came in yesterday. We have halibut. We have black cod. We have a bunch of amazing uh, flash frozen fishes. Uh, that seafood that you can take, put right into your freezer, high quality, sustainable, have my seal of approval, my stamp of approval, my chef on a mission um, approval on it. Most of you know that I'm very strict in the things that we bring in. For example, on, on um, when was it? Uh, New Year's Eve, I ordered Alaskan king crabs and I was told that from the distributor that the salesperson that they're Alaskan caught and Alaskan processed. We guarantee it, they are, they are, they are, they are. And I said, the price doesn't sound right for that equation. You, you're buying, Amer you're spending on American labor. American labor is more expensive than Chinese labor. It just doesn't sound right. No, no, Marcus, it, it is. And it came in, and sure enough, it was American caught, Chinese processed. A lot of our processors do this to save money. It costs 20 cents round trip to catch calamari in Port Ju in, 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 uh, in Point Judith in, in, uh, in Rhode Island. It costs 20 cents to ship that to China, have them package it, process it, bag it, whatever and ship it back, 20 cents round trip. Of course they're not gonna use American labor, labor because they're gonna make a lot more money and they, they don't lower their prices. They keep their prices up there and they put more money in their pocket, these companies and corporations. And this happens all through, all over the place. It just, it's, it's, it's common throughout the US. A lot of American companies do this. They don't use the American workforce to pack their stuff. I've been a firm advocate and supporter of buying American caught and American processed um, since we opened. Now, if you can't find it, then it's unavailable. So certain things may never be available like that because it's maybe just be the standard. So this is not a perfect system. Um, we have to make the best choices we can. So sometimes certain products are just gonna be like that and then we can't beat ourselves up about it. But if there is an option to buy American caught American processed, then yep, way to go on it, perfect. So that's what we do. Um, I did a post the other day. Somebody goes, oh, no more Chinese products for me. Um, I literally paid, and when, when we buy our to-go containers, I literally paid the last batch of to-go containers 25% more for American, on American to-go container versus a Chinese to-go container. 25% more. That's a huge difference that a lot of restaurants probably are never going to be willing to, to, to put up. Um, so 
um, you know, the stuff is out there, the stuff is very cheap, and we're lured into it. The only way to, the only way to combat this, this buying Americans, supporting Americans, is to vote with your wallet. This is why certain things cost more. This is why our calamari costs more. Simple equation. You pay staff $18 an hour, you have to pay them benefits, you have all this stuff in, in, in Rhode Island or whatever it is. It costs more than sending it to China to pay somebody 55 cents an hour, if, if that. A qualified seamstress makes 25, uh, 55 cents an hour in China. In Bangladesh, they're like 18 cents an hour. Bangladesh is probably the worst, um, the worst um, uh, place culturally to buy things like that economically. They, um, I've, I've watched documentaries and, and read books and listened to, to some to some interesting programs on on Bangladesh. How these women will work 18 hours a day, take take buses just to put a dollar in their pocket, two dollars, a couple dollars in their pocket for the day to to feed their family. Um, and it's a shame because American companies are taking advantage of this. Um, and when, if I look back at all my running clothes, I have some really good running clothes that I bought back in 1999, 2000, 2001. All these, all these running clothes that I bought back then were, were Nike made in America, Reebok, New Balance made in America. And I still have a lot of these shirts. I have a lot of these clothes still that were made back then. They don't quite fit me, but I have them. They're in my closet. And you look at the progression, I've seen the progression of running clothes in the last 20 years, 22 years, to all these brands have switched to, to made in China, made in Bangladesh, and guess what? The price has never changed. The price, you still pay 30 bucks for that running shirt. You still pay $35 for those running shirts. You still pay for the same exact price, and they're using a fraction of the labor. So where's that money going? Well, a lot of the money goes to people like LeBron and people that, that take these, these, these kind of money from Nike and all, the, all these places that take these millions and millions of dollars um, instead of putting up a stand and saying no, because this, is this, is this system is not a system that, that, that's just, it's not a fair system. It's just not a fair system. Take more money from the American consumer, make more profits, um, underpay wages um, in other countries and have all these corporate profits. But if you're a publicly traded corporation and you're on the board of directors, your main goal is to make money and it doesn't matter how um, money's being made with a lot of these corporations. So choose wisely, folks. There's a lot of really good companies. Patagonia, there's some really good companies out there that, that, that take a stand and do some really, really good things. Um, and it costs, costs a little more, but it's well worth it. So, um, so Judy's saying they deliver, make a living wage too, absolutely. Hey, Alby. What's happening, Alby? Hi, Jackie. Hi, Cheryl. Um, a lot of people on, I see. Hi, Sonia. Sonia says the ham salmon is amazing. Um, Kimberly, hello. Um, so, uh, Melissa. Hi, Melissa. So, Melissa, I know you've been trying to get some seafood from us. We're going to make a run up to the Monticello area. Um, so, Melissa, if you want to, if you know any friends or if you want to get an order together, just... Um, just um, um, email us what you're after, and if you know anybody else, if anybody's in the Monticello area, Rock Hill, we'll go up and make some make some deliveries, um, so that can happen. My daughter works up at the um, at the um, my daughter works up at the vet office in Rock Hill, so the um, she's there every day. Um, not the ideal thing for her to be transporting anything up back and forth, but um, if somebody needs something in a pinch, um, she can put it in her car and she'll meet you there. Um, so, Alby, yes, yes, yes to that, to that question. Absolutely. Um, rocking and rolling. So, um, <coughs> we are, um, Mother's Day is coming up and we, we're planning some things for Mother's Day. Um, if you come to the parking lot, folks, you're welcome to eat out in the parking lot in your car. There's no law that you can't tailgate and be out in your parking lot. We play music in the parking lot every single night, every single day. We have... Um, I have speakers set upstairs. I have a nice mixer. I have uh, um, um, powered speakers that sit upstairs. Same thing like when a musician comes in, you see those Mackie speakers they mount or they bring in. I have those exact whole system set upstairs on our porch on the second level. Windows open, speakers in the parking lot. A lot of people walk in and say, man, that, that's awesome music you're playing in the parking lot. Is that your son's room? I'm like, no, 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 that's, that's me blasting music out there. So you guys can sit and enjoy. A lot of people sit in the parking lot and enjoy a meal. Um, you get takeout, you sit out there, tailgate, whatever you want to do. So there's music on every single night, every single day that we're on, there's music blasting in our parking lot. So you're more than welcome to go out there and sit down and uh, sit in your car, um, sit in your trunk, pop open your trunk. It's municipal. It's a municipal lot. It's a municipal lot, so um, um, it's not my property. 
you're in the midst of municipal lot, um, you can hang out there. I've already asked village officials, like what, how, what, like what would be, how would happen if somebody comes out, gets takeout food, and walks outside and sits down? They go, Marcus, if they're in a new municipal property and it's open and there's a bench out there, they're in their car. He goes, we can't stop them. We can't stop them. There's no law for that. There's, there's no fine for that. There's no law for that. So. People can still go out. They go. They go. You can't control where people are going to go, especially on on, on public property. So that's some municipal lot folks. The village told me it's okay to do that. I got I got, I got okay from the, the village here. Sit down. Sit down in your car. I even have some tables out there. People have sat down on the tables and they're like, we can't tell them what to do. It's 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 a table. They're they're social distanced. You have one table here, one table there. So it's going to be a very nice weekend this weekend. Sunday's going to be an awesome weekend. Um, so we'll be blasting music out there. At some point, we're probably gonna have a musician out there. When this first went down, we had a musician that was coming that was gonna play. Uh, the first weekend of this whole thing went down, the whole lockdown, everything. We had a musician that was lined up that was gonna play in the parking lot on our property, blast music out there, and, and just, you know, like, hey, okay, folks, let's have a great time. Let's tailgate one more last time. So we're going to, I've talked to several music, not a couple, a couple musicians um, that um, one gets takeout here all the time from us. And he's like, yeah, Marcus, I totally wanna, I totally wanna play some music out there for you guys. So I'm interested in to reach out to some others and, and start some kind of something like that where um, we can encourage people to hang out on nice days in your car, socially, um, socially distanced safely, of course, and um, and feel like it's a, and just feel like a little bit of normalcy again, right? So yeah, so enjoy the music. I play uh, Spotify. I put on their their um, what's the album? I'm, it's on my phone. I put on their um, uh, road trip songs, road trip songs. So that's playing a lot of really cool songs in there. So people come in like, man, I haven't heard that song in years. That's awesome. These are great because we're in our car listening to road trip, uh, road trip classics or something. So they're like, this is really, really cool. So that's out there. Um, let's see if I have any more comments here. Um, so Lori says, looked at your menu. So Lori, if you look on the grocery list, you'll see carnaroli rice. If you look on our regular menu, you might see salmon with risotto on it, which we have not done in a while because we just simply have not been able to make risotto like that. So the salmon comes with rice now. So I'm not sure where you're looking. Don't look for risotto though. You have to look for, um, maybe I can just drop a comment really quick here. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Hopefully it's here. And it should be under rices, pasta, and rice. Carnaroli rice for risotto. Um, Laurie, I'm gonna send, drop the link on the comments here so you can see that. So. And scroll down to the rice, um, scroll down to the rice grain section and you'll see that on there. So, and again, folks, uh, fresh bread just came in today from Bread Alone. Fresh bread is here. The new four packs of Bail Me Out IPA are here. It's 9.30, I'm gonna get leaving in a couple minutes, folks, I promise. I gotta go for a quick run. I got my coaching call here at 10. Um, so the new four packs of Bail Me Out IPA are here, in stock, um, ready to rock and roll. They're on ice, we kept them, they came in cold, we kept them cold. So I will tell you there is an other half, other half is in here, 19.99. 19.99, other half is in there. Let me turn this around. And you can see um, we got Pablo Viejo Tequila, Mr. Peabody, Core. We have some great local distillery products as well. Uh, of course, this is backwards because um, there we go. So vermouth, Marciano Cherry Liqueur, our awesome gin, the Monopola. That's our well gin, our well vodka, which is certified organic. Uh, by no means are they well quality. We just call them our well, our house. Um, people have said to us in the past, like your well is like other people's top shelf stuff. That's our well too, right there. So um, our wines that we have are blowing out. Um, Albacore tuna in the pouch. Albacore tuna in the pouch. That is like tuna fish. Um, that is like tuna fish uh, salad. You can make tuna, tuna out of that. So that's really awesome. Um, let's see. Back to me here. Okay. Um, blood oranges just came in, organic Bartlett pears, uh, red Bartlett pears are in, more local apples, got some avocados left, we blew through a lot of avocados this week, uh, apple cider vinegar is back in stock from um, Dwight Miller Orchards in Vermont, local, transitional, they're transitioning to organic, um, 
honey, agave, uh, beet juice, uh, truffle oil, uh, lentils, garbanzo beans, olive oils. Uh, we even have seventh generation dish soap is here. We have toilet paper. We don't like to sell toilet paper, but we have it. If we uh, want to help somebody out with toilet paper, we can do that. Um, don't want to really sell it because it's expensive. Um, I was able to get one more case of toilet paper yesterday too. Uh, we're being rationed to toilet paper and the distributors that have it are only letting us have one case. So, um, Cheryl's saying, do you have more six and 20? So yes, Cheryl, it's coming in today. This bourbon cream liqueur that we're selling has been flying out of here. We're going through a case of it a week. This stuff is amazing. Um, So Barbara's saying, any of the distilleries doing hand sanitizer? So Barbara, yes, Cody, who works for us, uh, if anybody even know Cody, he works for us here. He also is the brewer up at Great Life Brewing in Kingston. Cody has just got some corn to make some corn alcohol for hand sanitizer at the brewery. He's distilling it. He's fermenting it today. I believe he went up there earlier today to ferment this, and then he's going to distill it. So Cody, who works for us, from Great Life Brewings, from Great Life Brewing as well. He also had, he's, gonna, he's making it today, in fact. He's making it today. So Cheryl's asking about the 6 and 20. So yeah, the 6 and 20 um, is amazing. Cheryl, drop a comment of how amazing this is. Um, 6 and 20. It's a bourbon. It's a bourbon and rum cream from the Carolinas, from North Carolina, North Carolina. And 6 and 20 is the name of the distillery. And uh, they make some vodka, they make some uh, whiskeys, they make some really, really awesome stuff. So um, we buy their bourbon cream and we've been going through a case of it a week. So, um, Barbara, you need bulk. All right, Barbara, I will um, message Cody and see what we can do on getting some bulk uh, for that for you. So, um, all right, hey, Greg, Greg is watching. So, um, and all right, folks, I got to rock and roll. I got to go for a quick run. I got to go on a 10 o'clock phone call, uh, coaching phone call, and got to get some work done here. Hope everybody has an amazing day, and I will be back at some point live, or you'll definitely see Jamie at 4 o'clock doing her cocktail of the day, happy hour with Jamie at 4. So stay tuned for that. Um, again, as a community service, we're giving out free gloves. Free gloves. Be safe. Come in and grab a handful. You don't need to buy anything. Keep them in your car. Do not pump gas with your hands. That's the worst place to touch the, the, the handle. Uh, the worst place to touch anything. Everybody's been touching that. Everybody's been touching that. And when you see people, like I see people pump, pump gas and then go in and grab a donut and then grab and eat their donut. I'm like, I've been watching this for years. I'm like, whoa. Even when you go to the store to buy, to buy grapes, anything, when you go to the store to buy anything, I see people that go into the store and they buy bunches of grapes and in the parking lot they're sitting there eating the grapes folks you have no idea what is on those you have no clue you need to wash you need to wash everything very carefully it's when people pick in the fields sometimes they don't have the proper facilities they don't wash their hands they've been picking up dirt all day they've been picking up garbage whatever it is they've been picking then it goes to a warehouse the people in the warehouse are sitting there driving a high-low, touching other things, um, and they're sitting there sorting through things, right? And then it goes and gets packed, and then it goes to a distributor, um, or to it goes to, let's say, a grocery store. And in the back, they're taking everything out of the boxes, the grapes and everything, and then putting them into, you know, on the shelf. You have no many times, you have, don't know how many, how many times along the way things have been touched along the way, so um, good idea to wash things very carefully. Um, some things come in the store like triple wash, like the spinach and stuff. Um, I would still wash it. I would still totally wash it. So, uh, and that's it, folks. Got a rock and roll. Um, oh, Steve wants to know what do you wash your produce with? So yeah, let me let me see if I can go grab um, what the best thing to do wash produce is. Um, hydrogen peroxide, food grade hydrogen peroxide is probably the best to do. And I'm probably gonna lose. Uh, I'm gonna lose I lost, I lost service walking into the kitchen was what I thought I was going to do. Um, but food grade hydrogen peroxide. Food grade hydrogen peroxide, folks, at home. Um, mushrooms. Wash mushrooms when you go to cook them. Do not wash mushrooms when you buy them and store them. If you wash a mushroom now and put it into the refrigerator, it will go bad. Same thing with berries. So certain things you want to wash when you're going to get ready to consume them. Mushrooms you wash. Um, 
right before you cook them. You soak them in water, you agitate them, and you pull them out of water. This is, this is one thing a lot of chefs do wrong. I've seen this for years. Is they'll, put, they'll put spinach, they'll put something into um, a vegetable into water, and then they'll pour the bucket of water out and pour the dirty water on top of the stuff again. I'm like, that just defeated the whole purpose of washing. You just like moved stuff around, got some of the stuff off, and then poured it on, back on, onto the produce. Doesn't make sense. So strawberries, especially strawberries. If you take strawberries, put them into water, and don't put them into a colander and hose them down. Um, people do that. They'll put them in, stuff into a colander and run the sink water on top of them, and like that does nothing. You take the, do that first. This is a good experiment. Do that first. Take strawberries, put them into a colander, run some water on them. If you have the sprayer, spray them. And then take those same strawberries, put them into water, into a clear container, fill it up with water, and then agitate the strawberries inside there and watch all everything fall off of it. And then at the bottom there, you'll see all the sediment. After you've already washed them, by the way, I've done this. It shocks people, especially other chefs in the restaurant industry, uh, because they're like, well, I've been washing strawberries like that way forever, my whole career. I'm like, You've been doing something wrong your whole career, so let me just show you a better way to do this. And then from there, you don't pour everything out. You pick things up out of water and then strain them. Mushrooms, same thing, a lot of dirt. You pick them up out and then put them into the strainer. So agitate, let all the sediment fall, pick them up and, 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 and strain them. So that's just one way to wash vegetables properly. Hydrogen peroxide works great, food grade hydrogen peroxide. Um, for me personally, a few years ago, and I've talked about this, I was battling, battling a parasite or something, I was battling something years ago, this was only four or five years ago, that made my digestion, threw my digestion way off and I, I was in bad, bad shape. Um, I was actually using Clorox, a very, very small amount of Clorox, and there's books you can find to do this. Just don't do this, don't, don't do this without, you know, just saying, oh, Marcus said do Clorox. There's books on this, you can do this. By the way, you can buy Chlorine, food grade chlorine, Clorox, from many sources online. This is the same stuff that your chicken producers use, except Murray's. Murray's uses a chalice's water. This is the same stuff, the same chlorine, chlorine bleach, the same stuff that every food processor, every chicken processor is using to soak your chicken in. And a lot of other things are processed like this. So for people to criticize, people are going to criticize and say, oh, Clorox, this, that. It's already in your food supply, folks. It's there. You're already consuming it. It's already part of what's being done to sanitize your food. So if you want to do it at home, you only use the Clorox plan and, and find something online, find something that's reputable, find somebody that, that'll guide you. This, this is what I would, this is what I did. I did a little bit of time, like, like half teaspoon of Clorox, half teaspoon of Clorox, probably two gallons of water. Soak my spinach really well. Strain it, wash it again really well, regular water. Wash it again really well, regular water, and then spin dry it, all right? That, I, and I would literally, I know somebody who actually does this with everything they bring into their house because of, because of parasites and stuff on food. They would literally take up a bucket, throw all their potatoes in there, a very, very little tiny amount of clocks. Again, read up on this, don't, don't do this. Um, Clorox is the only brand you can use, though. You don't buy another brand if you were to do this. That was what I was doing. They throw their pineapples in a tub, this and that, and just a small, small, small amount. Soak it, 30 seconds, strain it, wash, wash, repeat, rinse, wash, repeat, rinse, wash, and that is how you do it. Folks, and again, Clorox, chlorine, chlorine is already in your food supply. You've been eating it for years and not even knowing it. Every chicken, the way you produce, even the organ, even, even if you say, well, I buy Bell and Evans air dried, air chilled, organic chicken. They still walk around that plant and spray everything with chlorine. All the chicken is still sprayed once it's sitting there air drying. There's certain things that you process in food. Beef, ground beef, they use ammonia, all right? This is why you wanna be buying stuff from small farms, small producers. The USDA knows that a chicken processing plant is going to have salmonella no matter what you do. They know that a beef plant has E. coli no matter what happens. Even beef plants have salmonella. They test for salmonella in beef plants constantly because it's a it's, it can be common. Um, and as long as it tests underneath the, the, the I've been I've been I've been in a beef processing plant with the USA inspector while while they while, while they do these testings while they grab and do these testings. This was in Colorado. I was actually on 
unfortunately on the kill floor with the with the processing team and that and seeing everything how it happens. So I got an education on that many years ago. Salm they, salmonella is one of the things they test for in beef. They throw in ammonia in these ground beefs. So when you buy cheap ground beef, you're getting probably getting ammonia in it. When you're buying any kind of chicken, you're getting bleach in it. You're getting a form of bleach. You're getting chlorine in it. That's just how things are processed. There's no way around it. Commercially produced foods have that, okay? So, um, and your clothes and stuff have a lot of chemicals in them when you put them on your body, uh, especially when you're buying cheap fragrance um, um, uh, stuff for, for, the laundry, for your laundry. All of it has it. All of it has that. You put it on your skin. Um, your skin is porous. Things go into you, okay? Um, so we're being bombarded every single day with all kinds of chemicals. So watch what you're putting into your body. Watch what you're wearing. Watch all these kinds of things add up. All right, folks, I got to rock and roll. Um, stay tuned for later. Email your orders in uh, or call 647-3000. Email's the best. Wait for a confirmation from Jamie or call her to let you know that you know. Call her to let her know that you sent your email order in. And uh, that's it, folks. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll talk to you later. And remember, drink your vitamin C. Stay healthy. Get some sun. It's going to be beautiful this weekend. And uh, that's it. Talk to you later. Oh, Steve made one more comment. I stopped eating fast food burgers a long time ago during the college because I thought I had ammonia aftertaste. Good job, Steve. Yep. Um, I'm not sure how long they've been doing ammonia in, 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 um, in, but you can guarantee like any kind of ground beef that's going to the school system, to the hospital system, that stuff is so cheap and mass produced that the problem, the reason, the reason why they have to do ammonia and bleach or chlorine in, in food when they process it is that they're doing so much they're processing so much and they're processing the whole animal, right? So that every part of that animal has a use. It can go to a rendering plant, it can go to makeup or whatever. And the beef, the more parts of the animal they grind, once you grind, double grind it, fine grind it, whatever, you can hide a lot of things. You can hide a lot of gristle. You can hide a lot of things that if, if a restaurant or if you're buying ground beef and, and that's made in some plant somewhere, they're putting parts in. They're putting parts in that ground beef that you would never, ever, ever recognize as beef or as edible. And when they start pulling parts like that that are touching, touching the innards and stuff, you have to sanitize it. There's no way around it. You have to, this is why you have E. coli spreading so rampantly through a lot of these things. So I see that Dave just joined on. Dave owns a restaurant up in um, Rochester, New York, in Greece, New York. And Dave is one of the very, 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 very few restaurants out there if you're up in that area. They grind their burger, their, their beef every day from whole cuts of beef. Um, so that's one cool thing, Dave. You, you join this conversation at a perfect time. We're talking about ground beef. So most restaurants will buy stuff that's packaged who knows where and big mass operations. But Dave and a, a very other few selected restaurants will actually grind their own. It's, 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 it's a job that, 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 that a lot of restaurants just don't want to partake in because it's a lot of work. And we buy ours already ground, but I buy from one farm. One farm, it's only his beef, and I know what we're getting. It's from the small production. Once you break that big cycle chain of, of, of mass production, things happen much differently. The, you, you don't need a lot of the safety precautions that you need because they're pumping a massive amount of animals through. 400 animals an hour on these lines they're processing through. Um, and, and, and beef processing plants like IBP, Monfort, Excel, um, the, all these companies. 400 animals an hour walk down those chutes an hour, an hour. When you do that, when you do that, you're being very sloppy. You have a lot of cross-contamination. So um, um, you want to make sure, you know, that that stuff is, is, that's why it's super cheap. They make $15 a head on an animal and that's it and that's all they're happy with making. At 400 animals an hour, that's what they have to do. So um, Nancy's saying, oh my God, um, Hospitals, their food is so disgusting. Hospital food is the worst for patients to be eating. Whenever I have a loved one in, both of my parents have passed away, but they were in the hospital many times. Whenever they were there, I brought their own food and I argued with the nutritionists every single time. Folks, hospital food, they do not have your nutrition in mind. They have ADA credentials, American Dietetic Association credentials that are backed by Coke, don't get me on this rampage, Coke, Pepsi, the sugar industry, the beverage industry, um, they're all, they all fund the ADA and they all put forth their agenda. This is why in hospitals, they think, these dietitians think corn syrup and a pear metabolizes the same. It doesn't. Hospital food is loaded with corn syrup, white flour, nasty farm salmon. It is disgusting. 
most hospital food, most hospital food is horrific. If you have a loved one in the hospital, you bring them food. You bring them food because the food there, even the stuff they use, well, those are roasted potatoes. They're roasted with GMO soy oil. They're roasted with GMO canola oil with hexane gas in it. They're from potatoes that were sprayed with neurological damaging chemicals. They're, the, the hospital food is atrocious. And the one, thing I'm, the one thing that really gets me up going, my parents were in Orange Regional uh, several times in, in, in their later years. The amount of styrofoam, I was in there just, my father was just in there and in, in, in right before he passed away in, um, in August. Styrofoam like crazy, like you're a hospital, you're making a ton of money, use biodegradable, stop using the styrofoam. And it drove me crazy, styrofoam everywhere. Folks, hospital food, typical hospital food, most hospitals, maybe not all hospitals, maybe you know a good hospital out there that's, that, that, that has bucked that trend. Just like a lot of cafeterias, school cafeterias. Folks, it's a, it's, it's a, this is a game of, of, of buying the cheapest product, getting government subsidies, buying these, these products, um, and, and just and, and in hospitals, I don't know what they charge for food in hospitals, but if there's anything like a bag of, of vitamin C for $800, they're probably charging way too much. So I uh, don't mean to get on, on on that rant, but if you have somebody in the hospital, bring them food. Go to, go to a juice place and bring them fresh green juice. I bring my parents fresh green juice every single day. I would make cucumber, I would make fresh juice. Um, so um, I would bring them in hummus, I'd bring them in healthy things, organic things, because the hospital's not going to do that for you. So, um, Mary Shealy, how do we get, so Mary, this is great, this is a great question. So, there was a lady in here, a guest of ours, who lives up north, up in the Glens Falls area, or her sister lives up there, and her sister runs the school program for several schools. And what she told us, what she told us in the school systems are doing up north and in Glens Falls up north there, they grow, make, buy local, the kids learn how to make pizza. She, what she was explaining to me two weeks ago was like, wow, like there's hope. There's actually hope for, for school systems. And I was, I was like, when this is all over with, I want to come take a tour of the school, the cafeterias there. Um, I mean, they, they buy, they, 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 they make their own pizza. The cafeteria workers make their own pizza dough. Folks, if you, if you think pizza dough, the pizza dough that they put into the cafeterias, the hospital, they, they're not making it, they're buying it. It's easier to buy it. You look at the ingredients on there, you can guarantee there's, there's all sorts of funky corn syrup, funky stuff in, in pre-made pizza dough. It's, a, it's, it's atrocious. Folks, Commodity food, stuff you buy like that, prepared foods are atrocious. Unless you pay more and buy the real deal, all right? Good food is not cheap, all right? So, um, but it's your health. So, Denise is saying way too many sugary snacks. So part of the system here is, you know, Mary, going back to the schools is, is they've gotta get rid of the junk. The junk has just gotta get out of the school system. They've gotta get rid of, I don't even know if there's soda or whatever in some schools still. Um, but you know, schools, soda companies would pay schools dearly to put soda machines in. This happened in the late 80s, I believe, in Colorado. Colorado, one of, like Cheyenne, like in Colorado Springs, was one of the first high schools to, like, to get money kickbacks from Coke and Pepsi to place these machines and strategically put machines in schools to strategically place them. I'm not sure what's changed. I've not walked in and around schools. I know here that they fought to get rid of them way, way back in the early 80s. Um, they fought to get rid of soda machines in the school. I'm not sure what the current situation is, but there's a lot of just junk food in these in these schools to begin with, and you've you've got you've got to take this out because food tastes good, F food can taste really good, um, but the problem is we're relying upon this cheap food that's loaded with corn syrup, white flour, white sugar, deep fried foods, all this kind of stuff. Kids will eat pizza. Kids will eat homemade pizza, and I, I cannot wait to go to this the school system up there because I was so so like mesmerized when she was telling me all this stuff that these, this that they're doing in a public school system. In a public school system, you go to Gramsville, they have um, apparently they have a greenhouse there. They they approached me ten years ago and go, can you? We're doing this. We'd love to get your opinion. I never got to get up there, but they're doing a greenhouse up there. Certain schools are bucking the trend and growing foods and teaching kids and teaching kids how to do this, so it can be done. Um, part of it's just educating kids on what real food is. And, and part of it is giving them a, a solid message of, hey, corn syrup's bad and let's not use ADA credentials anymore where corn syrup is okay like a pear. So um, it's a whole paradigm shift in schools, but some schools are doing it. Um, I'm sure some hospitals, I've heard some hospitals are doing it out there. And of course, private schools, um, they can do what they want. They don't have to answer to the state. They can do what they want. All right, folks, 
I've got to get on my phone call here in a few minutes. Got to go for my run. Whoever has an amazing day. Great talking with everybody today. <coughs> Denise is Denise saying this is a nursing home. Uh, nursing home, the worst place. The worst, 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 worst place. Um, I keep trying to get off, but I want to answer everybody's questions too. So I got a few minutes. So um, seafood. Ellie's saying seafood sometimes like smells like ammonia. Yes, seafood will, especially shellfish, lobster, calamari. These things will start smelling like ammonia when they start going bad. Do not eat those, of course, in supermarkets. Folks, seafood has, should have no odor. Truly fresh seafood should have no odor. If you buy our salmon, if you buy our halibut and thaw it and smell it, put your nose in it, smell it, there's no, there's no odor. Seafood does not have an odor. Scallops do, and it should be sweet, 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 a sweet aroma, distinct sweet aroma. When scallops don't smell, they're bad. When other fish smells, that's on its way out. Ammonia is the worst. Ammonia is gone. Do not eat it. Totally gone. They're not putting ammonia in. It's, it's what's happening to the shellfish as it's breaking down. So, um, all right, I want to definitely, let's see. So, um, Jackie, last time I was in a hospital, I challenged the head of food services to try to take a bite of the eggs. They served me. The end result was they went to the store and bought fresh food for me to keep <clears throat> on the, fr that's awesome, Jackie. So Jackie made a comment here that she challenged the head of food service to try to eat what she, they were giving her. Folks, challenge them. These people need, the problem is people don't challenge these people. They think of these people as authorities and they don't challenge them. Challenge the food in the hospital. Challenge these people. That nobody ever challenges them. And that lady, and, and, and this was in Valhalla in Westchester, that I got into a full-out debate with the head, of, the head of nutrition there about corn syrup. And I told her how useless her degree was. And nobody's ever told her that before, right? Because we just put up with the crap that they give us. And we know that what they're giving us. You're in a hospital. Stop giving that stuff. Don't put something like low sodium for heart patients. And is that Use real food to begin with. Use the right salt. Use, of course, monitor the sodium. But... The people that are getting the sodium are getting cheap salt. They're getting cheap, poisonous salt. Challenge these people. These people are not authority figures. Challenge these people that are feeding us. Ch challenge anybody who's feeding you. Just challenge them, whatever, whoever, whoever they are. The school cafeterias, the, the hospitals, um, um, restaurants. Challenge them, say, hey, we want, we want better food. We deserve better food. If you're charging this much, we should be getting better food. That's the bottom line, so challenge. Good job, Jackie. I love to hear stories like that. I love to, because folks, the power is with us. The power is with us. The, don't leave the power into the, like every single day, and my kids went to school here, a block from here. Every single day, my daughter, my son's seven, 18 now, or he'll be 18 in a couple days. My daughter's graduated. Every single day, we brought them lunch. We sent them with lunch or we brought them lunch. I could not rely upon the school for my kids' nutrition. I just couldn't, you can't. We brought them lunch every single day. I own a restaurant, it's a little different. I brought them hot food. I'd show up with hot food every day. They would get you know, hummus, uh, a tofu stir fry, spicy shrimp, something. They would get something from us every single day, whether we sent it with them or we ran it over to them. You need to get your kids involved in this process. Get them involved in the process. Make it at night, plan your food out. One day a week, plan your food out for all week. Take them shopping, take them to a farmer's market. Take them to a natural store. Show them, take them to, to shop right and show them what a head of celery looks like. Show them how to come home and make, and make real food, make tuna fish, make egg salad, whatever you're doing. Teach them how to make this stuff and plan, plan the food all week and say, this is what we're taking to school money. Get them involved. Johnny, what would you like, little Johnny, for lunch this week? All right, this is what our choices are. What would you like? And spend Sunday afternoon, whatever, making food with them and, and, and have that part. I mean, you're making food at night. Okay, Johnny, you love what we made you tonight for dinner. Let's make extra and take it to school for lunch tomorrow. Let's make extra this. You like my potatoes so much, I made you extra for lunch tomorrow. Get the kids involved. Plan it out. And folks, if anybody's busy, I'm busy. I'm the super busiest. I'm, I'm like, people look at me. All my other restaurant friends are like, how in the world do you get so much work done, this and that? Like, when do you take a break, this and that? Because I'm constantly going, 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 going. So for me to stop every day and to make food for my kids and take them, even though I had everything here, was a big task someday. That wasn't an easy task, but their health was my priority. I could not, don't leave your health in other people's hands. Do not, 
do not do that. You can't do it. Your families, hospitals, whatever, do not take you. It's just, it's just what you have to do. So, Russell, thanks for the comment. Good info. Hi, Dana. Dana's on. Michael's on. Um, so, Denise, thank you. Thank you very much for dropping that comment, Denise. Thank you, everybody, for dropping comments today. I really appreciate it. Been on a, long, a lot longer than I thought I was going to be. Um, just a real recap of what I was talking about. Then I've got to get on my 10 o'clock call uh, with my accountability partner, my coaching, my coaching partner. Um, Connor Rolly Rice. It is the one rice you use for risotto. Arborio's okay. Violone Nano is awesome, but there's not much of it around. Connor Rolly. Do not wash your risotto rice. Ever wash it ahead of time. You want the starches. Carnaroli stays firmer in the center. So you can, the way you cook it is you want a, a creamy, starchy rice. You have more forgiveness with Carnaroli. It's a little more expensive than Arborio, but it's well worth it. Um, the other thing is the restaurant smells like a bakery today because bread alone delivered their, their bread or their baguettes. Um, we got some loaves of bread. They walked in with... Um, Nine boxes, nine big boxes of bread. So the whole restaurant right now smells like a bakery. It smells amazing in here. So fresh baked bread from Bread Alone right now. Folks, if you're buying bread, organic bread is always the best. It has no bromide. Look up the, look up the harmful ingredients or the harmful effects of bromide, bromated flour. It's in a lot of the baked goods you're buying. There's a reason why organic costs more. No bromide. Uh, we banned bromide here years ago. Every time I buy something that has flour in it, I make sure with the producer that they're, they're using unbromated flour. Um, so those are two big things, bread and risotto. That was the title of today's things. Got great conversation with a lot of people here. Thank you everybody for sharing your thoughts and thank you again for your support. I really, really, really appreciate it. Um, your story is here and we'll talk to everybody later. Have a great day.